tribe right now. And Je Jeremiah is speaking to the southern tribes, and he is crying. You know, Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. He cried all the time because he was crying and weeping and telling the house of Israel, the house of Judah, Yehuda, to straighten up. Get yourself right. You're doing wrong. You're doing wrong by those who you have enslaved. You're not letting them go. You're not making a, 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 a you're not doing what you're supposed to do concerning the written, the Torah of Yahweh. Get yourselves together. Get your lives together or Yahweh is going to disperse you. He's going to bring the king of Babylon, the king of Babylon to come and take you over. So Jeremiah cried constantly about the house of Yehuda to straighten up their act. But one thing in the book of Jeremiah that I love is that when Father starts out, he starts out with this hammer, and he is hammering on them. And then he comes down with a promise. Father never chastises his people without giving them a promise at the end. And he gives them a promise of them bearing, bearing seed and returning and coming back to him. So this is perfect in the book of Revelation being the last book that was canonized in the scripture that it would relate and correlate with the first book that was written in the scripture. That makes sense. So as we see Revelation having that correlation, what I'm going to go over today is going to directly relate to what happened in the Garden of Eden and how Father is going to rectify it and how he's going to turn things around and he's going to break the bonds and the yokes of sin that have been on his people and he's going to bring us into a lovely place. Amen? Amen. Now, we start out in the book of Revelation. Let me go to my screen. And this is a beautiful thing. We start out in the book of Revelation with talking about the tree of life. And actually, Father is talking about here, he goes into The tree of life, there being three trees. So let's look at Revelation 22, 22nd chapter. And we will begin there. And it states, and he showed me a river. No, it starts out with the, the water of life. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have second guess myself. See, that's what I do. The river of, and he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of Elohim, or God, uh, and of the Lamb. Now, let's go back and let's talk about this crystal clear river of life. Yeshua said that he is the living waters, amen? You remember when he was standing at the at the well with the woman? And she was saying, what are you going to scoop with? You don't even have anything to scoop the water out with. What are you? And, and he said, you know, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for the eternal water, for the everlasting, the water that would never go dry. The river. He is, he is the everlasting, eternal waters. In Hebrew, it's called the the Hayim Vayim, the living waters, the waters that are living. In, um, in the understanding of the scripture, when a person gets baptized, or mikveh, we call it, they have to be immersed in waters that are moving. So to get into a regular, uh, you know, just a, a pool of water with no, where nothing's coming in, nothing's going out, that's not, that's stagnant. You can't be immersed in stagnant water. So the water has to be living and moving. 
because it's coming in, it's going out, which represents the, the living waters coming in, washing you, taking the sins out. So we see Yeshua being the water of life. And then we're going to go, I'm going to ask someone, I'm going to give you a few scriptures and I'm going to ask someone to read. The first one is Jeremiah 2 and 13. Anyone can read Jeremiah 2 and 13. The next one, someone get John 4 and 10. The next one, someone get John 7 and 38. Then 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. Then I want someone to read, uh, I'll read Revelation 21 and 6, but Zechariah 14 and 8. Zechariah 14 and 8. And whoever reads Zechariah 14 and 8, do 9 too. Zechariah 14, 8 and 9. And then I'll do Revelation 22 and 17. Okay? We're going to look at these crystal clear waters and how they represent Messiah. Who has Jeremiah 2 and 13? Okay, Jeff. Uh, well, my people have done too much. They have forsaken me without any living water for you out the for my people have done two evils, Yahweh is saying, through Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, that they have forsaken me, number one, the fountain of living waters, to hew out for themselves cisterns, cisterns cracked, which do not hold water. Cisterns would be like a well, would be something that would hold water. But they're cracked. So if anybody in here know what would happen if you put uh, some water in a cracked glass? How long is that water going to stay in there? It's going to drip out. It's going to soon diminish because it's cracked. So he's saying that they have forgotten him, forsaken him, the fountain of living waters, and they have hewn for themselves this stagnant, they made this cistern. It's stagnant because there's no water coming in and no water going out. It's just stagnant. And then it doesn't even hold water because it's cracked. Who's that John 4 and 10? John 4 and 10. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeshua answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of Elohim, the gift of Elohim, who it is who says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living waters. Okay, who has John 7 and 38? We're looking at the living waters, the waters of life. John 7 and 38. Someone... Anyone can read. Uh huh. Seven thirty-eight. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Shall flow from his innermost being. Shall flow rivers of living waters. First Corinthians ten and four. Who has that one? The next person gets somebody gets Zechariah fourteen eight and nine. 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. Do you have that, Rabbi? And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed. And the rock was Messiah. Hallelujah. Speaking of, your, of, of Messiah being the rock, the water that flowed from the rock. Do you remember during the time when the children of Israel were in the wilderness? And they were saying, we need water. We need water, Moshe. And Moshe was supposed to go over, and he was supposed to speak to the rock. But Moshe got a, got 
a little excited and hit the rock with the staff. The rock cracked in two and waters, water flew forth. So he says here, and they all drank from that same spiritual drink. They drank that spiritual, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed. The rock was Messiah. So now we wonder why Yahweh had a problem with, with Moshe striking the rock. That's a whole nother teaching. Okay, let's go. Zechariah 14, 8 and 9. And in that day it shall be that living waters flow from Jerusalem, half of them for the eastern sea and half of them for the western sea, in summer as well as in winter. And Yahweh shall be sovereign over all the earth. Oh, yeah. In that day there shall be one Yahweh and his name one. Hallelujah. There shall be one and his name one. There will no longer be all these different names for Yahweh. Oh, thank you, Father. And then I'm going to read Revelation. Revelation 21 and 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Aleph and the Tav. I'm the, in Greek it says I'm the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts I shall give the fountain of life, of water of life without payment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then Revelation 22 and 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, the two witnesses, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. And he who hears, let him say, come. Can everybody say, come? come? That's right. That's what we say. We say, come, Messiah. Come, Shia. Come. And he who thirsts, come. And he who desires it, take the water of life without pain. Hallelujah. So we know that Yeshua is the water of life. He is the eternal water of life. He is, he is life. And what is water to the earth? If you don't have any water in a land mass, that's right, drought, disease, pestilence, everything starts dying. Your vegetation first starts dying. Then your animal kingdom starts dying. And then finally your people, it goes up the ladder, start dying. So Father um, made, gave us the living waters of Yeshua. But we're going to look at the word, what we're reading in this scripture here, where it talks about clear, crystal clear. It says, and he showed me a river of water of life. So we already know now, Revelation 22 and 1, who is the water of life? And then he says, crystal clear clear. He says, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of Elohim and the Lamb. So, as he says, crystal clear, we're looking at that word clear here. And that word clear, actually in the Greek from the Septuagint is lampros, to be transparent or shining or brilliant. But the root word of that word lampros is lampas which means a torch or a lamp, a flame, of which to feed with oil. <laughs> now what other lampstand do we know? The lampstand, the menorah, the lampstand is fed with oil. And we know that the middle one is the servant candle. And even though on some of the depictions of it, it'll show the shamash or the, the servant candle, which is in the middle, it looks like it's the same size, but in the original, the makeup of the menorah, the shamash would have been a little higher than the others. You put the oil down through the middle one, and then you light the middle one. And the oil filters out through the other branches, feeding the other branches. So that's why beside Yeshua, the scripture says that we are not the branch. Remember, we're not the branch. We're not the root. But the root bears us. We're the branches. 
And all of it is also a depiction and a picture of the menorah because they're called branches. You know, when Messiah Yeshua said, let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and they will glorify Father Yahweh who is in heaven. So he's even speaking to the, the picture of the menorah, that we are the branches. And as you light the branches, we are to give light to the nations. We are to give light to the people who are around. We're supposed to allow that light to shine. So that, not that we will get glorified or get honored, but that Father Yahweh will be glorified. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we look at this, we look at the root word of this. We see torch, lamp, flame, of which is fed with oil. 